Denver 7 News at 5 starts right now. Snow is falling in the metro, and wouldn't you know it, it's just in time for rush hour. Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson's tracking how much we can expect and when it will stop. First responders carry out a daring rescue at a senior living community. They had to uh, force the door open and that the smoke had banked down almost to the floor. Now the people who live there are forced to find a new place to stay. I just came out and it was just a ton of smoke and stuff. Americans are told to evacuate Ukraine immediately. The U.S. believes a Russian invasion could come at any time. We continue to, to see signs of Russian escalation, including new forces arriving at the Ukrainian border. After a couple of days with temperatures in the 50s, here we are with snow back across the front range. You are looking live at conditions along I-25 at Arapahoe Road in Centennial. And uh, it's kind of tough to see the road there. And then in Denver, on the right-hand side of your screen, you really can't see the skyline. So let's check the radar currently. Snow moving north to south, most of it right now in the core of the metro. And we want to start uh, with Denver 7 Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson, who is, of course, tracking the snow for us. Mike? Hey, you guys. Yesterday, 61 degrees. Midday today in the 40s. But watch how quickly this thing came in. Our camera out at City Park. Boom! We go from sunshine to zero visibility and heavy snow in just a few hours. This is what the radar looks like currently. Snow is driving right down the I-25 corridor. It's getting lighter to the north up toward Firestone and Dakota and up toward Fort Collins. The heaviest is right over the Denver area now and it continues to move down along Monument Hill where it's going to rise up over the Palmer Divide and some areas may see a good six inches of snow before it's all said and done. The winter weather advisory continues until 11 o'clock tonight. This is what that band of snow looks like statewide pushing southward behind a cold front that has moved in, bringing in the chilly air, the upslope conditions, and the temperatures are going to fall quickly tonight as well. Currently, we're down to 27 degrees in Denver. We'll drop into the teens overnight and with darkness settling in. Any road surfaces that have been wet may quickly go over to snow covered and slippery and quite icy this evening. How long the snow is going to last, how low it'll get tonight. And when conditions bounce back, it's all coming up in about 15 minutes. All right, we'll see you in 15 then, Mike. Thank you very much. And you can track the snow, get updated forecast anytime by just downloading our free Denver 7 Plus app. We have interactive radar, a 10-day forecast, and a 24-7 weather live stream. And you can find it on your Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Android. Flames were seen shooting out of a senior living community in Lakewood this morning. Several units were damaged, and now some people need a new place to live. Denver 7's Patrick Perez is joining us live in Lakewood with an update on this investigation. Patrick? Hey, Ann. In the past half hour, we learned that at least 28 people were displaced. It's hard to see exactly where that fire is now because of all the snow. But behind me, you can see some crews removing debris and boarding things up. This could have gone a lot worse were it not for the quick thinking of our firefighters and a working sprinkler system. But no doubt, a very scary morning here. A rude awakening just before 4.30 Friday morning. I just came out and it was just a ton of smoke. And stuff. Christy Bettis watched as a fire at Brookdale Meridian Lakewood Senior Living across the street spread to several units. When I came out to look, the wind was blowing really hard. Firefighters responded within minutes, tackling the flames seen from streets away. While the sprinklers worked on what fire was below, it wasn't working on what fire was above in the attic space. West Metro Fire spokesperson Rhonda Schulting says the fire caused smoke, water or fire damage to as many as eight units. I would guess that some folks here possibly woke up to having a sprinkler on them raining down water on him. Miraculously, only one person had minor injuries, a woman who could not get out of her apartment on her own. The resident who was in her unit still was at a window yelling at firefighters that she was in there. Firefighters rescued her through the hallway along with her pet parakeet whom she wouldn't let go. She and the bird were inseparable and the firefighters got both her and the bird out safely. Firefighters quick thinking and a working sprinkler system helped limit the fire spread even as strong winds blew. I'm just thankful for our fire department. They were here and took care of this and saved probably the whole structure and a lot of lives. A spokesperson with Brookdow says it's working on a plan to support the affected residents, including a potential move to another Brookdale community. 
So the fire this morning caused the power in this building to go out. Crews ended up restoring it to all but two of the units here, which means that the residents who were evacuated because they had no power, those whose apartments are still standing in good condition are going to be allowed to return back if they have not already done so. Those whose apartments were really badly damaged by either the smoke, water or fire damage uh, may have a long way to go before they can either come back home or go somewhere else. We'll keep you updated on this. For now, we're live in Lakewood. I'm Patrick Perez, Denver 7. All right, Patrick, thank you. Thank you. Police shot and killed a 31 year old man in Aurora this morning. It happened at an apartment complex near 13th and Chambers. Police say they had multiple calls about a man going door to door with a gun. Officers arrived and say they told the man multiple times to put his hands up and officers say that man refused and they shot him. The two officers involved are now on leave, which is standard procedure in these types of investigations. More than 400 people in Denver have died from fentanyl overdoses just in the past year and tonight reaction is pouring into what Denver 7 investigates has uncovered well, families and city leaders now talking about our exclusive report and our chief investigative reporter Tony Kovaleski back tonight. Tony, you found accused and arrested uh, drug dealers facing literal or, or, or no accountability at all. Exactly. And lots of calls and social media on this one. Ann and Shannon, we crunched the numbers and discovered last year in Denver. Listen to this. Nearly 70% of arrested and accused serious drug dealers were able to walk out of court without paying a single dime. That is, to me, it's cold-blooded murder. That's the passionate voice of a father who lost two sons to fentanyl. We arrest the same people over and over. And that's the voice of frustration from a veteran undercover Denver cop. The judges keep letting them out and no one's being held accountable for their crimes. Our investigation found several examples, including this guy, Erasmo Fernandez. Mr. Fernandez was ordered to appear for a second advisement at 9 a.m. this morning in courtroom 2300. It's now 11.03 a.m. Mr. Fernandez has failed to appear. Undercover cops arrested Fernandez. Records show he was in possession of a loaded firearm, wanted on warrants, and he was carrying 20,000 fentanyl pills. A judge forced him to pay only $1,000 in bond money, and then he failed to appear in court for his next hearing. What's your reaction to this one example? Because it doesn't look good. Yeah, this one example is troubling. Armando Saldate has been nominated to be the city's next executive director of safety. 20,000 fentanyl pills. Um, that is obviously a serious crime. I think it makes us want to take a harder look at the system. I'm, it, it motivates me to, to work on this problem. And that is just one example. Our review of Denver court records for all of last year found 69% of all accused serious drug offenders were granted personal recognizance or PR bonds, meaning they got out of jail at no cost. And those same records showed 45% of those arrested and accused drug dealers failed to appear for their next court date. It's awful. This is broken. The data completely shows that they're not coming back. Powerful words from a dad who clearly has perspective. Our sources say this lack of accountability for drug dealers is a major contributor to the metro area's booming crime rate. How will this change? It's now up to city leaders and Denver's DA to answer the question, is this acceptable? We will continue to ask why. Ann? Well, thank you, Tony. President Biden will speak with Vladimir Putin tomorrow over fears Russia could invade Ukraine at any moment. The Kremlin has more than 100,000 troops near Ukraine's border. Officials warn Russia has now built up enough equipment and vehicles for a major attack. And Americans are also being urged to leave Ukraine within the next 24 to 48 hours. We don't know exactly what is going to happen, but the risk is now high enough and the threat is now immediate enough that this is what prudence demands. Russia is denying it has plans to invade. Coming up, Colorado's unemployment trust fund is out of money and state lawmakers are trying to figure out a solution so employers aren't forced to pay. There's enough problems that COVID has caused that this is one that shouldn't be part of it. And Canada is now taking steps to stop truckers and protesters from blocking a busy crossing at the U.S. border. The snow is really coming down. I'll let you know how much longer it's going to last and how cold it'll be overnight.